Bowler just released a new non-stainless powder metallurgy seal called K888, and people are already saying online we need a new term better than super steel. K888 is a hyper steel. So I have tested it. Is it a hyper steel or is it just hype? Let's find out. Hi, I'm Laren. This is Knife Steel Nerds. Today we're talking about a brand new bowler steel called K888, as well as an earlier crucible steel called CPM1V, which when you look at the compositions, they are extremely similar, other than a cobalt edition. So to back up a step, these are both matrix high-speed steels, which were developed in the 1960s by Vasco in Pennsylvania. I have written about these types of steels in the past, but to give a short recap, what these metallurgists did is they said, we have these high-speed steels, they're capable of high hardness and high hot hardness, but they have all of these carbides in there for wear resistance, but they are detrimental to toughness. So some of the alloying elements and the carbon that is added to the steel ends up forming a carbide instead of being in solution in the matrix of the steel. So what's in solution in the iron portion, not the carbide portion. And they were getting better and better at measuring the composition of the matrix. So they said, let's take the composition of the matrix in our high-speed steels like M2 and M42 and then make a steel with that composition. And that way we'll have the high hardness with higher toughness because we don't have the extra carbide. So they developed this steel called Vasco MA, which was a matrix version of M2. And then Matrix 2, which was a Matrix version of M42. M42 was their 70 Rockwell C high-speed steel. Now, there were some differences that happened, like they had to austenitize somewhat lower so that they didn't blow up the grain size. And so it didn't end up being perfect. Like, they had to leave some carbide in there. And so, ironically, the Matrix comp composition of the Matrix steels is different than the original steels that they were based on. Anyway, so Vasco MA and Matrix 2, they had some popularity. Way further ahead in the year 2000, Crucible released CPM-1V, which is a powder metallurgy version of Vasco MA, which in turn is the Matrix version of the popular high-speed steel M2. In 2005, Bowler released K890, which was advertised as a competitor to CPM-3V, and it sort of looks like a cross between CPM-1V and CPM-3V, with higher carbon, vanadium, and cobalt when compared with CPM-1V. Then just this year, 2024, K888 was released, and it is essentially CPM1V with a cobalt edition and a little bit higher carbon. Cobalt is added to a lot of high-speed steels for higher hardness and higher hot hardness, but it also gives a decrease in toughness. So I was interested in how CPM1V and K888 would compare since they are so similar. And so that's what we studied, and that's what we're going to show today. So I was able to get some K888 from Roman Kase. He was able to get some from Bowler. It's a little bit difficult to obtain right now, even from Bowler. And as far as I know, none of the knife steel supply companies have any yet. But CPM1V I got from Niagara Specialty Metals. They don't sell it that regularly to individual knife makers, but Alpha Knife Supply recently got some for sale. So if you're interested in the CPM1V, which you might be after this study, you'll see. Uh, go to Alpha Knife Supply. But we were able to get the steel and do a bunch of experiments to see how it performs. So what's exciting about K888, according to Bowler's advertising, is that it has the highest toughness of any of their prior powder metallurgy steels, including K890, the 3V competitor. And they also show in their charts that its toughness at 64 Rockwell is higher than even K890 at 62. So... Their advertising says that it maintains very high toughness, class-leading toughness, while at quite high hardness, 64 Rockwell. What makes this potentially exciting is that toughness decreases significantly with higher hardness. Steels get closer and closer together in toughness the higher the hardness is. And you can see that with this chart from Hitachi. So with their steels, they've got some that can reach quite high toughness at lower hardnesses, but once they approach around 62 Rockwell, the toughness really starts to drop. So it's very difficult to make a high toughness steel at 64 Rockwell. Now, when we looked at the microstructure of these two steels, I got knife maker Sean Houston to do the metallography of them for me so we could look at the microstructure. The first surprise was that the CPM-1V had a significantly finer carbide structure than the K888. Uh, you know, an order of magnitude almost smaller carbides. Much finer structure in the CPM-1V. 
and the carbide volume is a bit lower in the 1V. It's around 3%, while the K888 was around 4%. This was expected. Thermocalc predicts that K888 would have about 1.2% vanadium carbide and 1.8% M6E, that's tungsten molybdenum carbides, while the CPM1V it predicted to have somewhat less, 0.9% vanadium carbide and 1.3% of the tungsten molybdenum carbides. So, but the big surprise was really how much bigger the carbides were in the K888. So there's, there's really a significant difference here. So we'll see if it shows up in the toughness. Now, comparing with other similar steels, Z-Tough is another 1% vanadium steel. It has chart-topping toughness, the highest toughness of just about any steel that I've tested. And it also has a pretty fine carbide structure. CPM3V, slightly coarser, a little more carbide, a little more wear resistance. And then we also have Caldi, which is a non-powder metallurgy matrix steel from Udahome. So its carbides are also pretty small, especially for a conventionally produced steel, but it does have some carbides that are larger than what we might expect in a powder metallurgy steel. So I definitely wanted to look at the hardness of these steels. A major selling point of K888 is that it can be heat treated to 64 Rockwell. Here is the curve from Bowler, where they show you can get 64 Rockwell or slightly higher if you osinatize between 2000 and 2050 degrees Fahrenheit. That's 1100 to 1120 Celsius. And then temper within this blue shaded region. Around 1000 degrees Fahrenheit or 540 Celsius, you can get 64 Rockwell. So I wanted to compare the full tempering curves for K888 and CPM1V to see the difference from cobalt addition and the tiny change in carbon. I don't normally make full tempering curves because each of these points you have to temper for two hours twice to get the hardness. So it takes a really long time, but I thought it would be very interesting for comparing the difference with cobalt. So in my tempering curves, I found that K888 could get pretty hard. It even peaked out at a close to 66 Rockwell if you temper below where Bowler recommends, which I also don't recommend. But around 1,000 degrees, I was getting around that 64 Rockwell mark that they were advertising. CPM1V, as expected, doesn't get quite as hard. I did get close to 65 by under tempering, but with a 1,000 degree temper, it's closer to 62, even with the maximum austenitizing temperature of 2,050 degrees Fahrenheit. So to compare these two steels more closely, I've got two tempering curves lined up here. CPM1V at 2050 and K888 from 2000 degrees Fahrenheit. The reason why I chose those temperatures is because the as-quenched hardness was about the same. We had to austenitize the CPM1V hotter because it has a little bit less carbon. So as-quenched hardness about the same, and then we can see the effects of the cobalt on the tempering resistance. And you can tell that already at 300 degrees Fahrenheit, the K888 is already harder than the CPM1V, and its hardness has gone up significantly. The reason for this is precipitation strengthening from little tiny iron carbides that form during tempering. Uh, you'll see that there's another big jump in tempering hardness around 900 degrees, which again is from secondary hardening. It's just from alloy carbides instead of iron carbides that form at a higher temperature. So, but already at 300 degrees from the cobalt addition, there is more tempering resistance. So the carbides do not coarsen as quickly and the K888 is already harder at 300 degrees Fahrenheit tempering. That's about 150 degrees Celsius. And then it maintains that higher hardness all the way up to the maximum temperature I tested, which was 1,050 degrees. So the tempering resistance is higher in the K888 as we would expect from the cobalt. So that is a potential advantage of the K888 design with the cobalt addition. For comparing toughness of the two steels, I use austenitizing temperatures of 2000 and 2050 Fahrenheit. That's 1100 to 1120 Celsius. I tempered the K888 in both the low regime and the high regime, so one at 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit, that's 540 Celsius, and then two at low temperature, so 350 Fahrenheit, about 175 Celsius, or 400 Fahrenheit, that's about 200 Celsius. In most steels I have tested in the past, notably CPM crewware, but there are others, the low temperature tempering led to higher toughness than the high temperature tempering. But I wanted to see if that was the case here with K888. With the CPM1V, I only did low temperature tempering, either 300, 350, or 400 degrees Fahrenheit. That's between about 150 and 205 Celsius. So showing all of the results, 
The first thing that you notice is that the CPM1V, that's the blue points, tested significantly higher in toughness than the K888. So we got excellent toughness around 36 foot pounds using 2050 with a 350 temper. We got around 62 and a half Rockwell at that high toughness. And then when we tempered at a lower temperature, 300 degrees, we got over 64 Rockwell with still 22 or so foot pounds, which is very good for that high in hardness. However, for K888, its highest toughness was with a 1000 degree temper, and it got just short of 64 Rockwell, and it was around 19 foot pounds, so below the CPM 1V at comparable hardness. Now, this is presumably the heat treatment used by Bowler when they showed their 64 Rockwell data point being tougher than K890 at 62 Rockwell. So I was a little bit surprised that the CPM1V was significantly better, even though I knew that cobalt should reduce the toughness. The biggest surprise was probably how low the toughness was on the low temperature tempering. It seems like those tempering temperatures were insufficient for getting good toughness, perhaps due to the tempering resistance from the cobalt. But our 2000 degree austenitized with 400 degree temper, it had less toughness than our 2050 degree with 1000 degree temper, which was at a higher hardness. So overall, we learned some interesting things about the effects of cobalt. Yes, it gives tempering resistance and higher hardness potentially, but it makes low temperature tempering less effective. We'd have to temper even hotter to get good toughness. And uh, that that cobalt significantly reduced toughness. So the CPM1V had better toughness for a given hardness, and we were able to use low temperature tempering in the CPM1V. So looking at that toughness on the chart, the CPM1V and K888 look pretty good. Uh, the CPM1V, of course, looks a little better. So if we look at 64 Rockwell, our CPM crew wear was about 14 foot-pounds, while K888 was around 19 and the CPM1V was 22 foot-pounds. So for a hardness value of 64 Rockwell, pretty high on the Rockwell scale, the CPM1V especially maintained quite high toughness. Now, if we look at CPM1V at 62 and a half Rockwell, around 36 foot-pounds, that matches the toughness of some steels with quite high toughness, but at lower hardness. So Caldi had about that same toughness at 61 and a half Rockwell, and 3V and A8 Mod were getting that toughness around 59 to 60 Rockwell. So CPM1V can maintain that same toughness, but at 62 and a half Rockwell. Very impressive. Uh, the only disappointment with the CPM1V is that we weren't able to get a 61.5 Rockwell point close to Z-Tough with 45 foot-pounds. And that was because our 2000 degree austenitized with 400 degree temper did not have any improvement in toughness versus the 2050 with 350. So it would be interesting if we could try some higher tempering temperatures with the 2050, like a 400 degree, 450 degree, or maybe 1000 degrees and see if we can match that toughness of Z-Tough in the 61 to 62 Rockwell range. That would be interesting, though it's still quite impressive for the 62 to 64 Rockwell range. So we'll have to see if we can do that in the future. K888, I'm a little bit disappointed just because it's worse than CPM1V. It's not that it tested very poorly, but it's uh, more sensitive in heat treating. We've got to use specific tempering temperatures to get in a good toughness range, and it's still a bit below CPM1V. But to show off more about how impressive the CPM1V was, I have it overlaid here on the chart with low alloy, non-stainless steels, or stainless steels. And in both cases, you know, it is up and to the right relative to the other steels. So it is tougher at a higher hardness than other steels in the low alloy category, simple carbon steels or stainless steels. So excellent hardness, toughness combination. For edge retention, we did one catcher knife each for K888 and CPM1V. Both of them we austenitized at 2050 Fahrenheit, that's 1120 Celsius, and we tempered them at 350 Fahrenheit, 175 Celsius. That didn't achieve that great of toughness with the K888, but that shouldn't matter for this edge retention testing. The hardness and how much carbide and what types of carbides are the main things that will control the edge retention. So for the CPM1V, we got 63.1 Rockwell, and the K888, we got 63.9 Rockwell. And if we look near the bottom of our Catra edge retention chart, the 1V and K888 had similar edge retention to AEBL and Apex Ultra at the same hardness. 
If we look at these dotted gray lines, that shows the expected effect of hardness that follows the same trend as Apex Ultra and AEBL approximately. We find at the bottom of that trend CD number one, that is basically the same steel as ZTuff. So CD number one, CPM1V, K888, they have about the same edge retention for a given hardness. So that, that makes some sense since ZTuff is also a low carbide steel with high toughness. So ZTuff, it seems to be the best choice right now for that 61-ish Rockwell range, though maybe we could try some lower tempering temperatures to get higher hardness like the 1V. And like we said earlier, maybe the 1V can go even can go lower in hardness and for a little bit less edge retention but better toughness. And of course, we can go a little bit harder and be in the same range as the K888 at 64 Rockwell as we've shown in these tests. So I think these steels did quite good, especially for their stellar toughness hardness combination so similar wear resistance to steels like aebl and apex ultra higher than a lot of low alloy steels and simple carbon steels like 5200 and 1095 so pretty good wear resistance and edge retention especially for how high their toughness is so to summarize, these are two matrix high-speed steels. CPM1V has been around for over 20 years. K888 is brand new. K888 is very similar to CPM1V, but with a cobalt addition. CPM1V is the same as the conventional version Vasco MA, which in turn is a matrix version of M2. The cobalt led to better tempering resistance versus CPM1V, and the K888 could reach higher hardness because of that cobalt addition. However, the cobalt addition led to lower toughness compared with CPM1V, especially with low temperature tempering in the range of 350 to 400 Fahrenheit. That's 175 to 205 Celsius. So I preferred the properties in the CPM1V. We still got to about 64 Rockwell with excellent toughness at that high hardness. Though we're going to have to see in the future if we can do some higher tempering temperatures and see if we can get even higher toughness in the 60 to 62 Rockwell range. Alternatively, it would be fun to see if ZTuff or CD number one can get to high the same high level of toughness as CPM1V at higher hardness if we temper it lower. The edge retention and wear resistance of K888 and CPM1V was pretty good for the high level of toughness, similar to AEBL, Apex Ultra, and ZTuff or CD number one. So overall, after testing these steels, CPM1V is my preference between the two. It maintains very good toughness at high hardness, along with pretty good wear resistance. Though I don't know of any knife supply companies that are offering K888 yet, and it's still difficult to obtain from Bowler, but you can get CPM1V from Alpha Knife Supply. So I want to thank Roman Kase for sending me the steel, and Sean for doing the metallography and grinding the catcher coupons. And thank you to my Patreon supporters. Thanks to Patreon, I'm able to pay Sean to grind those Catra knives and to do the metallography and frees me up to do other things like doing all of these tempering curves and actually doing the Catra testing and the toughness testing. So if we split some things up, we can use that Patreon money to do more research. And that's what the Patreon really is for. I use all of the money that comes in from Patreon for knife steel research. And we get to learn very interesting things like this, that CPM1V has the best toughness of any 64 Rockwell steel. So thanks everybody. I hope you learned something. Bye-bye.